Welcome back to PRN Test Drive. I'm James, and this is the 2024 Honda Civic Type R. Now, we've already featured the Honda Civic Type R many times on PRN Test Drive, but it is so good that when it came across my desk here in Montreal, I again had to grab it because I get the unique opportunity to tell you what it's like to live with something like the Civic Type R on not so great Quebec roads. And I'm also not a seasoned manual driver. So if you're in the market for one of these things, but you're not sure if you can live with a manual transmission on the daily basis, and you're also not like an advanced driver, well then this might help you out as well. So let's talk first about what is under the hood for the 2024 Civic Type R. No change from 2023, so we still have the same two liter, four cylinder direct injection turbo VTEC engine. That gives us 315 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque. So this thing can absolutely move. Now, of course, it comes standard in just the six-speed manual transmission, which I think is the right way to go for a vehicle like this. We've also got front-wheel drive as well, so you know you might be able to drive this thing a little easier in the winter, so that's also great news. And of course, with all that horsepower, you have Brembo brakes that come with it as well, because you need to be able to stop with all that power behind you. And we've also got an independent strut front suspension, and we have an independent multi-link rear suspension which is great to have as well. So now, last thing before we hop in, I wanna know your thoughts on something because to me, the Type R is really close to the Elantra N. Maybe not on paper, maybe not on horsepower, but for what they wanna be, for a sporty sedan that happens to come in a manual that looks really aggressive, really cool, they both have a rear wing. You know, there is a lot of similarities, but the one thing is, is I see a lot more Hyundai Elantra Ns than I do the Civic Type R. And I think the main reason for that is simply because there is a price difference between the two. But what I wanna know is if the price difference was the same, you could pay the same money, for an Elantra N or a Civic Type R, which one would you get? Or would you completely scrap these two cars and you would just go with something like the Toyota GR86? Or would you get the Volkswagen Golf R? Let me know in the comments. So I've spent a week with each. I've spent a week with the Hyundai Elantra N and now I'm spent a week with the Honda Civic Type R. So if you wanna know my opinion, stick around to the end of the video and I'll talk about it. But first, I wanna to talk to you about the 2024 Honda Civic Type R, let's hop in and drive it. All right, on the road now, 2024 Honda Civic Type R, where it belongs, where it shines, where any other shortcoming that would come with this vehicle kind of gets forgiven when you actually take this thing for a spin. And if you have the chance to do so, I highly recommend you do it because this thing, I'll be honest, really surprised me because I didn't expect to be that impressed by it. I, I thought that, you know, in my mind, the Elantra N would blow it out of, the, out of the water by some margin, but it actually is closer than some of you might think. And it definitely, definitely blows the Volkswagen Golf R out of the water in terms of, you know, I think that's the car that it's kind of close on uh, horsepower and performance for. Uh, yeah, definitely has got a leg up on that in my books anyways. But overall, it's been actually really easy to live with. I mean, the transmission responds to me well. I've got rev match downshifting, so I'm terrible at heel and toe uh, rev match downshifting. I'm terrible at just normal rev match downshifting anyway. So the fact that I have something that can take care of it for me is a huge deal. And it's also got a ton of performance. So I can do plus R mode, kind of puts it in race mode and it makes my suspension really rigid, but I can give it some beams here from second gear and. Oh my goodness, I've got shift lights and everything, and that's already highway speeds and I'm at third gear. Crazy, right? Like, whoa, this thing really moves. And it just, it's happy to do it. It's happy, it, just, it loves to do it. It just is an absolute wicked thing of an engine. And I really, really like it. I like the feel of it too. Also, what I find really cool is the fact that, you know, I feel like it's not torque steer that I get. I feel like I can feel the road quite a bit with this steering wheel. I feel the bumps, I feel the road through everything. And the way that these seats are designed really makes you kind of, you feel every bump of every tire. I feel like I know exactly where my tires are and what they're gonna do, and what the limit of those tires would be. So this thing on a track would just be an absolute demon. And I think that's probably why, not only does it have a lot of horsepower, yes, but I think part of the reason why it's so quick at setting track lap times is because the driver can feel everything the feedback here is really really solid and one of the best i've seen so far and i remember saying when i was driving the civic touring i was like oh my goodness the 
handling is incredible on this thing. And then I drove the Civic Si. Oh my goodness, again, the handling is even better. I wonder what the Type R is like. So I just pushed to try to get it. I got it and oh my goodness, it did not disappoint in that area. Whoa, the handling is really, really good. It's in a league of its own almost. Like, I don't even know, like for the price point really, it is on the expensive side, but still like, man, the handling they offer is like really, really sports car level, true sports car level. And I'm so satisfied with it. And the transmission has nice and short throws. So, you know, when I am ripping through gears, it's short and it's very notchy. I know exactly when I've hit second, third, fourth, fifth, or sixth. I know when I'm in the gear. I know when I can lift up that clutch and the clutch has a very good engagement point too. It's right there in the middle and you can really feel it. After like a couple of days with this car, you really, it basically becomes second nature and you kind of understand how it works. It doesn't have a rear lockout, which for most beginners is, especially for me, I prefer a rear lockout in most of my cars. Um, uh, but I don't have it in this one, so I just kind of have to be careful when I'm shifting from fifth to sixth. You can't go all the way over, otherwise, yeah, you know, you might run into some trouble. Let's see, look, you can rev match downshift and then just absolutely fire it. It's so cool. Oh man, like it's just so good. Like, look, some of you might still enjoy the old, you know. Civic Type R look, you know, the, the previous generation. I found it too aggressive. I found it, I found it really immature. I felt like the people that are buying those cars and driving those cars are like 18 years old and up, or like kind of like that area. And then they came out with this and I was like, oh, that's actually really cool. But you don't really notice how good it looks and how subtle the changes are or like how subtly sporty this thing is until you actually see it in person. I saw this thing in a person and I was like, okay, hang on a second. This thing's really, really well done. Like they took, they dialed back the aggression. They dialed back like, you know, the, the weirdness of it. Like it doesn't need to look that crazy. It still looks sporty. It's got wide hips. And then you have your kind of aggressive sportiness via the rear wing that is quite big on this thing. I don't know. I would, I like this thing so much more than the previous generation. I think they've done such a good job. And let's rip it again. Oh, those shift lights are so nice. Oh my God, you don't even have to be that good. I'm not even that good at manual driving, but this thing makes me feel like a pro because of the rev matching, because of the way that the throws are really short. Like you just feel like an absolute race car driver and I'm so here for it. So I wanna talk a little bit about the interior as well. Cause you can see I got these red seats. I mentioned how good they are at letting you feel the road. They also hold you in place really well. This thing corners like nobody's business. It corners like a all wheel drive car, which is nuts. It's got such a low center of gravity somehow. Even with, even with having four doors, I feel like I can just control it all the time. And I think part of that's due to the seat and again, the feedback. And I love the fact that it's red. I think a lot of people have complained that, oh, there's too much red, red carpets, red seats. I say, let there be red. The more red, the merrier. I am a red fan. I'm a Ferrari fan. You know, like, anything red, I'm a fan of it. So obviously when I stepped into this and I saw the red carpets of the red seats, I was like, yep, I'm home. This is where I belong. And it's still the case. I love the fact that we got like these nice racing seats. The back is like, you know, it, you could have put the back seats red too. Would have been absolutely fine with it. But you got room in the back too. You've also got plenty of room in the trunk because this is kind of like a hatchback setup here. So we have tons of room. I've got tons of room for my baby seat, tons of room for extra stuff. Like this just is easy to use as a family. And also I've, I found people complained a little bit about the fact that there was no middle seat. Personally, I've owned a bunch of sedans in my life and I've never actually needed to use the middle seat or I've really, I've never had people really wanting to use the middle seat regularly. So the fact that he took it away, I don't know. I don't, I don't consider that a, a fault for the Civic Type R. It is a sports car that happens to have a bunch of room in it. And you know, if I have to sacrifice a middle seat, it's fine. They give you cup holders, hard to complain. So earlier on in the video, I asked you a question. If the Hyundai Elantra N and the Civic Type R were the same price, which one would you buy? And I told you I'd give you my honest answer because I have spent a week with each car and each car I've spent a week with in manual. I haven't touched the DSG or whatever it is called, the, the DCT, there it is, um, for the Elantra N. But honestly, I don't know if I need to because I'm this is manual. So this is the best comparison that I can get. And I think my answer is gonna surprise a lot of you. First of all, Volkswagen Golf R, throw it out. No way. <laughs> if I had the choice between all three and all three were the same price, I wouldn't even look twice at the Golf R because the Elantra N and the Civic Type R are in leagues of their own. I'm sorry, Volkswagen, you've got a cool vehicle. There's a lot of enthusiasts around it, but these two kind of 
just take the cake. Um, all right, so so my answer surprised me because I honestly, when I picked this thing up, I didn't think that I would I would have this answer. But if it's for going price for price and for what they are, I think I'm going with the Civic Type R. And it's surprising me that I'm saying that. After spending a week with both, I kind of prefer the way the Civic Type R drives because it's so raw, it's so real. I feel a lot more of a connection like, you know, don't get me wrong, the Elantra N is in a class of its own because it's really, I mean, the Type R, it's hard to compare it on paper because this, this has a lot more horsepower and stuff like that. So it's a little difficult to, uh, you know, to really compare them. You know, the reason why we see so many more is because, well, the price for the, you know, the Civic Type R is a lot more. So, uh, you know, you're gonna see a lot, a big difference there, uh, but still, I still, I still think that if they were the same price, I, I would take the Civic Type R because as I said, the handling is a lot better. I feel the road a lot more. Um, you can, I mean, you can make the argument that maybe the, the suspension is a little bit nicer on the body with the Elantra N, but honestly, I've been driving with a sports suspension on, on purpose because I love feeling the road in the Type R. I love the way that it makes me feel the road. Others that I brought in the car don't like it. They find it too bouncy, too bumpy. But if you put it in comfort mode, it actually helps quite a lot, like su a surprising amount. So they've done a really good job with the suspension tuning and the dampening there as well. But also, I just feel like I have more room. Like, you know, the Elantra N, I can fold down the seats, but then you still have that support bar in the back that adds a whole bunch of stability to the vehicle, so you don't want to remove it. It's not something that I would get and then remove it. The only place where I think, really, the Elantra N actually beats the Type R is those, that little N logo in the seat is, is phenomenal to look at. It's also got a way better infotainment system. That is a fact. Um, you know, the, the software is better, it's less laggy. You know, it doesn't take that long for my phone to connect, where is in the Civic Type R, it does take a little while, but I don't know. If I'm talking about driving, look, Elantra N sounds better. Okay, we'll admit that too. But I think that could be fixed pretty easily on the, on the Honda Civic Type R because I've seen people with this model year, 2024, 2023, and those Honda Civics are loud. So it's definitely there. It's just a little more muted. It comes a little bit more muted from the factory than say something like the Elantra N. But yeah, I'm surprised just because it has so much room, that hatchback trunk, you know, I feel like the back seats are a little bit more roomy and I'm probably going to get hated on for that because I remember telling people how much I absolutely adore the Elantra N and that is still the case. And you know, it, because they are different prices, <laughs> if I was to go to the dealership today, I'm going to buy the Elantra N because it's the more value pack. But if you make these the same price, the Type R is a really competitive beast. So yeah, I think that's gonna about do it for my thoughts on the Civic Type R. I love it, I love it, I love it. I think it's cool, go test drive it. Go try it out for yourself and let me know what you think. And if you own one, any generation, even if you own the, uh, the, let, the you know, the, the not as nice looking generation, at least in my opinion, let me know how the reliability has been. Let me know how you like the manual transmission on that. Do you use the rev match downshifting or do you, do you turn it off because you're a real manual pro? Let me know in the comments. I want to hear everything that you have to say. But make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe. Turn on the bell notification so you never miss a single vehicle that we upload. We are three guys and we've always got vehicles every single week. We're always bringing you videos that you're going to want to see. And our only goal, or at least my only goal with this, is to help you make the ever difficult buying decision because there's so much selection. There's so many choices out there. I just want to make it a little bit easier by giving you as much detail as I can and as often as I can do it. So if I helped you at all, you got to subscribe to PRN for me. And with that being said, I will see you in the next week. See you in the next car. Take care.